Hello financial fans, welcome back to another stock analysis. Today we'll be covering Visa stock ticker V. Visa is a global payment technology company that facilitates electronic transactions between consumers, merchants and financial institutions. The company operates a payment network that connects businesses, financial institutions and consumers in more than 200 countries and territories, enabling them to use Visa branded payment cards and digital payments. Visa's payment network enables consumers to start using Visa credit, debit and prepaid cards, as well as digital wallets like Visa Checkout to make purchases online and in-store. The company also provides a range of services for businesses such as payment processing, data analytics and fraud detection. In addition to its core payment services, Visa also operates a number of programs and initiatives to promote financial inclusion and drive innovation in the payments industry. This includes partnerships with fintech companies and programs to promote digital literacy and financial education. Visa also offers a variety of products and services to its clients such as Visa Direct, a real-time push payment platform that enables consumers and businesses to send money to another person or an account in a matter of seconds, Visa B2B Connect, a platform for secure and efficient cross-border business-to-business uh, -business payments, and Visa Developer Platform, which allows developers to access Visa payments capabilities through APIs to create new payment experiences. Currently, they're sitting at a market cap of $463.6 billion and in 2021, they generated a revenue of $29.3 billion. The dividend yield is sitting at 0.8%. 39% of their revenue is generated through data processing, 34% through service revenue, 22% through cross-border cross fees, and the remaining 5% from other various income streams. To determine the final valuation of Visa, we'll be using a margin of safety. This margin of safety will be based on financial ratios, the financial health and the growth of the company. We'll be using a standard margin of safety of 25%, which can either increase or decrease by the ratios that we're going to look at in just a moment. The severity that the margin of safety will increase or decrease by will be determined by using a scale. When we're using four colors in a scale, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, light green will mean a 5% reduction and bright green will mean the 10% deduction from our margin of safety. When we're using three colors in a scale, bright red will mean a 5% increase, orange will mean no change, and bright green will mean a 5% deduction from our margin of safety. The first two metrics that we're going to look at are the EBIT growth and the, the margin growth. The EBIT has grown from $7.2 billion in 2013 to almost $20 billion in 2022. The average growth in EBIT during this period was 12.2%, meaning a 5% deduction from our margin of safety. The margin has also gone up, going from 61.5% in 2013 to 67.4% in 2022. The average growth in margin during this period was 1.05%, meaning another 5% deduction from a margin of safety. The next two ratios are the dividend growth and the payout ratio. The dividends have gone up, going from 60 cents a share annually in 2010 to $1.50 a share annually in 2021 with the huge peak going up to 2013, but dropping again in 2015, but managing to regain itself all the way to 2021. The average growth in dividends, therefore, is 13.4%, meaning a 10% deduction from a margin of safety. This, while the payout ratio is still sitting at a very low 21.9% ratio, meaning they still have a lot of room left to increase their dividends further. This causes it, the margin of safety to drop by another 5%. The final two ratios are the debt to EBITDA and the return on invested capital. To get a debt to EBITDA ratio, we have to take the debt, subtract the cash, and divide it by the EBITDA. Out of this, we get the amount of years of EBITDA it takes for the company to pay off all of their debts. For Visa, this is sitting at a very low 20% debt to EBITDA ratio, meaning a 5% deduction from a margin of safety. This is because they are holding a lot of debt and can holding a lot of cash rather, and can pay off most of their debt using their cash. The return on invested capital is sitting at a very solid 24%, meaning a 5% deduction from a margin of safety. Looking very good so far for Visa. Let's go look at the valuation models next to determine the intrinsic value of Visa. The first valuation model that we'll be using is the discounted cash flow model. I've imported the free cash flow going from 2013 to 2022. The average growth in free cash flow during this period was 33.3%, but we're using the expected growth for 10 years in free cash flow. I've gone with 12%, seeing as they have managed to roughly achieve that throughout the last 10 years, and to be a little bit conservative. 
With this percentage, we can determine the future free cash flow for Visa and determine a terminal year of valuation using a perpetual growth rate of 3% and a discount rate of 9%. Doing this, we get a sum of free cash flow of $544.3 billion. And all that's left to do to get our equity value is add the cash in equivalents and subtract the debt. This leaves us with an equity value of $540.3 billion. And to get our discounted cash flow price per share, we have to divide it by the amount of shares outstanding. Doing this, we get a discounted cash flow price per share of $331.51. And with the current price of $224.90, we get an upside of $106.61, which is a 47% upside. The second model that we'll be using is the dividend discount model. I've imported the dividend payouts going from 4 years ago to the current year. The average growth rate in dividends during this period was a whopping 15.73%. Since we're calculating the lifetime expected growth of dividends for Visa, I've gone with 8.3%. We'll also once again be using a discount rate of 9% in this calculation. And, doing the math, we get a discounted dividend model price per share of $232.07. And with the current price of $224.90, we get an upside here of $7.17, which is a 3.2% upside. The last model that we'll be using is the multiple valuation. In this model, we'll be looking at similar companies to Visa, look at their stock price and their earnings per share. This way, we can determine an average PE multiple in this industry which in this case is 31.33. All that's left to do here to get a fair value is to multiply by the earnings per share that Visa is generating, which in this case is $7 uh, per share. Doing this math, we get the fair value of $219.32, and with the current price of $224.90, we get a downside of $5.58, which is almost a 2.5% downside. Let's go look at the final overview of our valuation models next. Looking at our final overview, we've imported the discounted cash flow, discounted dividend, and multiple valuation prices per share. Out of this, we get an average of $260.97. The margin of safety we've determined earlier, using a standard margin of safety of 25%, deducting 5% for the debt to EBITDA, deducting 5% for the EBIT growth, deducting 5% for the margin growth, deducting another 5% for the return on invested capital, deducting 10% for the dividend growth and deducting 5% for the payout ratio, leaving us with a negative margin of safety, indicating that I would pay a premium to own the stock. This leaves our fair value at $287.06, and with the current price of $224.90, we get an upside of 27.64%, and 27 so in this case it will be a buy. If you would not like to use this premium, this still leaves us with an upside of 16.04%. So it still would be considered a buy. If there's any other dividend stocks that you would like to see me cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching.